Hey guys, Stovall here. I want to introduce you to Chapter 1, The Science of Psychology. What you may know of psychology is perhaps it is a helping profession it's designed to help people with their problems. Perhaps you've had a class in psychology in the past and you're aware that psychology studies everything pertaining to the mind. And that's actually a very uh, engaging topic, a very uh, deep topic. When we look at the science of psychology, we can ask ourselves the question, uh, just what exactly is psychology? Um, you can think of the textbook definition as psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. So, for instance, when I say, what is the mind? Uh, these are some things my students have said before in class. Uh, psychology can study personality, which what is what makes me, me. Uh, psychology can study behavior. Psychology can study abnormal behavior, what happens when a brain does not work the way it needs to. Psychology could study sleep, uh, creativity, intelligence. Uh, emotions. All of these things may come to mind when you think of psychology. In short, the textbook definition is that psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. You're going to want to get that down. Uh, that will be important for you. Uh, psychology is the scientific study of behavior and mental processes. Now, those mental processes that we would study would be human mental processes, human behavior, and animal behavior mental processes. Uh, four goals of psychology that you will also need to know. Uh, you could see this on a test, certainly. But you can think of the four goals of psychology being description, explanation, prediction, and control. We want to describe what behavior we're seeing, specifically identifying which behavior we're studying, but we describe it, we explain it, uh, so that we might predict and even control that behavior. And in psychology, the control of behaviors becomes important when we start talking about unwanted behavior, problematic behavior, as well as improving performance in in memory, performing, uh, improving performance in uh, sports or academics. But in order to fully look at what psychology is today, we have to look at what psychology was in the past. And so we can go back and do a little uh, philosophy before we can do history and before we, we can even do any more psychology. We think of the first people who looked at um, human behavior and the mental processes. More specifically, uh, we talk of philosophers. Now, philosophers didn't necessarily take scientific examination, uh, explaining, predicting, controlling, predicting behavior. They were really interested in um, pontificating or theorizing about what the mind is. So, philosophers such as Aristotle, before there was even the, the concept of the mind, they addressed the soul. They said that the soul is a connection, it, it involves a connection between uh, the body. Aristotle said that your body is that material essence of a man, and the soul was the non-material essence uh, of a man. Um, so in terms of this connection, they believed Aristotle just said that these things were uh, some, something of one and the same. Now Plato came about and argued a form of dualism, it said that the body and the soul are separate but interrelated. I oftentimes ask my students in class, who, who is the, the person who stayed up the longest? Sometimes I'll have students tell me, 
uh, 36 hours or maybe uh, 42 hours or maybe two or three days. Um, I've actually known people who have stayed up for three days at a time and they go, they'll start experiencing sleep deprivation psychosis. If you've ever stayed up for a long period of time, you'll know your personality begins changing. And this is what some sees evidence that your, your physical and your non-physical component of yourself are interrelated. Now, Rene Descartes came about a thousand years later after uh, what's known as the Enlightenment, and you don't hear him talking about a soul. He talks about the mind and the body, and he says they have a reciprocal inter interaction via the pineal gland. Now, what I tell my students is that your pineal gland helps uh, tell you when it's time to go to sleep, it helps put you to sleep. So it doesn't necessarily interact with your with your your soul. You know what we're talking about here is a movement away from the word soul. I ask my students, and I'll ask you uh, if you believe that you have a soul. Just want you to write that question down, perhaps, and and answer that question for me. How would you answer that? Do you believe? you have a soul. If you say yes, I would follow up that with how do you know? Uh, can you prove it? What does your soul do? Uh, if you would say no, I don't believe in a soul, I would again ask you um, how do you know? How do you know you don't have a soul? Um, and so the movement to study the mind is an idea really to study the, the functioning of the brain. Um, I tell my students oftentimes that apart from my role as a psychology teacher, I am uh, on church staff, I'm a pastor, and uh, the spiritual and religious aspect of my life is very important to me. Um, and so I am one who, who talks about the soul on a daily basis. However, I also talk about the mind. And so when we talk about uh, the difference between soul and mind, oftentimes soul has a lot of religious or spiritual connotations, ideas of, of uh, life after death or conscience. Um, and the mind doesn't carry with it those connotations. Uh, but I would say that the mind is important for us to study because uh, if you don't get rest and if you, if you don't exercise, if you don't eat well, you certainly feel differently. Uh, so I see validity in studying the mind in the field of psychology. Uh, in studying the soul, I would say, um, I joke with my students, I'm not trying to kill their belief in the soul. I'm not trying to kill their soul by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but, but it's important to note that, that uh, psychologists are gonna, are gonna sort of compartmentalize thinking of the soul in terms of philosophy and religion. Um, and then they will sort of limit their discourse to things that they can uh, study. So the things that we can describe and observe and predict and control. And the soul's not one of those things. Um, and so if we, if we look at the interaction between the mind and the body, uh, this will be sort of our starting point for the field of psychology. Okay, I'll go ahead and pause this and um, look forward to some interesting discussion uh, on what we've learned so far.